I'm Hillary. Welcome to Teaching Moments. Today I wanted to do a review of math curriculum. But first of all, I wanted to show you a little math trick I do. My younger kids have had a hard time learning how to write their numbers the correct direction. I don't know if this is just because they were dyslexic or if children just do that at that age. But I went to the dollar store and I found this number line. So I put it on the kids' desk, or I will put it on the desk that they're working on in front of them when they're doing their math worksheet. And then when they start to write their numbers backwards, I'll be sure to point at the number and say, be sure to do it this way. And it has helped them a lot to be able to um, have that visual right there for them to be able to write their numbers the correct direction. Just thought I'd give that tip is just to be helpful for you guys. So on to the math curriculum. When I started homeschooling in 2007, we used a Becca for every subject. With their math, I felt a Becca was going a little bit too fast. They would have several different um, concepts on the same page. So there would be like teaching a few problems about dimes, a few problems about what 10 o'clock looked like, and then a few problems about adding some numbers. And it was just, not enough repetition of the same thing, but then too much of different things. Even though it might have still been going with the same concept of 10, it still wasn't working the time enough or the dimes enough. And it just didn't work with us. It was too confusing for my kids to switch those concepts. So I didn't like that, so we switched. Um, one of my children I used Horizon Math with. And it pretty much did the same thing that Abeka did, um, lots of different, several different things on one page, too much switching of the kids' minds. So that didn't work for us either. So then I tried Saxon math. And I don't have a lot of complaints about Saxon math. They at least stayed with a uh, concept for a while. Um, I don't think they had a ton of repetition, although it was much better than I felt Abeka and Horizon. But I switched from Saxon because I found something I liked even better, and that was Matthew C. So now we've been using Matthew C for many years, and I really like it. So let me tell you the reasons why I like it. One of the things I like about it is the videos. These videos come with the teacher books, and it's meant to be for the parent teacher to watch the video and see how to teach your children. It has Mr. Demi, who is the creator of Matthew C. It has Mr. Demi teaching a class of kids. You never see the kids, but you do hear them from time to time. But it shows how to teach them. Um, I don't watch the videos too much in the um, lower grades with the kids because I've done this several times now. So um, by the time I got to my fourth child, I kind of got some of the how to do some of these better but with the older grades or um, with fractions I have my children watch it with me so that they can um, try to learn from him and if they don't understand what he's saying sometimes they'll get it just fine and so we just give them the worksheet and they're good to go and I just kind of am there to guide them but if they didn't understand it sometimes they'll be like mom that was just words to me I have no idea what he just said then I'll stop slow down, take it step by step, and break it down for them and figure out where they missed what he was saying. And um, so I like that they have the videos, especially when teaching the fractions and, and older grades. Another thing that I like about Matthew C is the manipulatives. It is Matthew C. So they have the blocks. These blocks are used for the addition and subtraction for sure. And um, they do refer to them for um, time and other things as well. So you have like your 10 block. And then notice this is helps with subtraction like in the whole, you know, subtraction. Um, this is the 100 block. For the numbers 1 through 10, they each have their own block. And they're always the same color. The ones will always be green and the yellows will always be a four. And notice that these are 3D. They're not just flat blocks. They're 
three D blocks. And I mention that because this is said to be a very a good curriculum for dyslexic children. And dyslexic people think in 3D. So if you get them 3D materials to help them, it's really going to go with the way that their brain is already thinking. So that is the blocks that they use for mainly the elementary grades. Once you get into the fraction book, Epsilon is the fraction book. Once you get to the fraction book, they have the fraction overlays. So this is how they show one third. This is one half. And then they also have fourths, fifths, six eighths, tenths, sixteenths that they show with these fraction overlays. It's um, he shows it better in the videos when you're going through that book of how to use these. But these uh, visuals really helped my daughter to get the concept of what fractions were and to be able to work with it, and especially when you're adding them and subtracting them. And it was just, it's really good. I love it. I love how they did this. And I've seen several different uh, math curriculums try to show fractions, but I like the way Matthew C. does it the best. And then they have... Also visuals for, or manipulatives for um, algebra and decimals. I hadn't got to the algebra yet with them, but I had done a few of the decimals. So I just wanted to show you what some of those were. So they get, they get some hands-on learning with all the different grade levels. Oftentimes you'll see um, curriculums do well with like kindergarten through third grade, and then after that, they just kind of like everything's on paper, everything's flat and on paper. Um, some of those kids, though, still need that um, 3D and being able to touch it like that. So Matthew C. carries that through um, better. So that is the manipulatives that they use. And remember, the more senses a child or a person can use to learn something, the better they are going to have a chance of remembering it well. The other thing that I like is it has plenty of worksheets for the children to be able to get the concept. I'm just going to use this Epsilon workbook for an example. And they have three worksheets. They have, so this would be chapter 24, 24A. They have worksheet A, B, and C that is only on the new concept. And then they have worksheets D, E, and F are on partial of the new concept, and then the rest and the back two is a review of what they've been learning in the past. And then worksheet G is called an um, enrichment page, and that gives them more real-life application, um, and it's often a fun page in the younger grades. Um, and then in this Starting in this book, I noticed that they started giving tips on worksheet G. So, I said all that to say, you don't have to have your child do every single worksheet every single time. If they get the new concept, move on. Um, I like to have my kids do at least one of the new concept, one that has a review, and then we move on. Sometimes we do G, sometimes we don't. But again, once you get up here to the epsilon, make sure that read the G worksheet to make sure that it's not giving some tips that your student might need to know in the future or that would be helpful for them. Um, so I like that they have enough worksheets and if they still needed more worksheets on just a certain concept then you can go online they have more worksheets you can make. I also wanted to mention yeah you don't you don't have to have them do every single worksheet and actually if you do have them do every worksheet every time it can put your student behind so be aware of that. Um, I also like that they have a few extra helps for the kids. Like this, for example. This is a song book that Matthew C. puts out to help kids learn their addition facts and their skip counting. And they have a biblical version of the song and a science and literature version of the song. So you can do whatever works best for your family. But this really has helped um, my kids to learn how to skip count. Like my youngest son, I think he was six or seven at the time, wasn't even learning how to do his skip counting 
and he ended up learning how to skip count by three because they put it to jingle bells. And so every time at Christmas we would hear jingle bells, we'd be doing three, six, nine. <laughs> and so it's a very catchy and it's a great way to learn their facts and learn their skip counting. Again, the more senses you use, the better it's going to stick. So they have the CD and the website. There's also drills on the website that they, they can do. Um, and you can put in what exactly you want them to do. Maybe you want them to do all their addition or maybe just multiply by sixes or whatever. Um, you can do that on, on the website. There's also online classes on the website that they can um, sign up for for pre-algebra and above. Um, those look pretty good, and I had intended to do that with my daughter, but we ended up going a different direction. There is also a really good customer service, and I have called them before with help. Um, my oldest had a really difficult time with math, so I called them for help on what do I do, is there any more resources I can look at, and things like that, and they were very helpful. As a matter of fact, they were almost too helpful because the representative got my email address, and she sent me a bunch of resources for um, to help me out. It was almost overwhelming, but it was so good. It was good to be able to have the help. Um, yeah, so their customer service is great. So I really like Matthew C. There's not too much I don't like about it. I think it's a really great curriculum. Um, I did want to mention that there is something called Dyscalcula that is a... Um, it's a learning challenge, but it's, here, I have a sheet. Dyscalculia is a learning issue that makes it hard to understand numbers and number concepts. And dyscalculia is just as common as dyslexia. It's just not talked about as much. Um, oftentimes, those who have dyslexia or ADHD also have dyscalculia. And one of the ways that we can help students with dyscalculia is, <clears throat> excuse me, by giving them um, a multi-sensory um, curriculum to learn. If you want to learn more about dyscalculia, here's a really great worksheet that I found, or a, a sheet that tells about it. You can go to understood.com, and they'll have a, more information on dyscalculia. It is out there, and it is real. It's not that they're not trying. It's not that they don't want to understand. Um, they just have this that's making it a little more difficult for them. Um, I also wanted to say, oh, wow, as a homeschool mom, I stressed out so bad about teaching my kids math. I wanted them to know their basic facts, know it like this, be able to put it out there, um, master them. But if your child is not rhythmatically having those basic facts flow off their tongue, it's going to be okay. Just breathe. We're all going to breathe together. Breathe. It's going to be okay. Sometimes math just isn't someone's thing, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We have calculators. We have technology helps these days. If they're not getting the concept, there are helps out there to help them, help you to teach them and help them to learn the concept. So don't stress over it. It's going to be okay. When I was in high school, they didn't allow us to have calculators. But nowadays in high schools, some high schools even provide the calculators. And the reason behind that is once they get into their higher level maths, they want to just make sure that they're understanding the concept of what they're doing and the steps of how to do it. They don't want their um, basic math facts to trip them up. So they give them calculators so that they know that they'll have the basic math numbers down and that they'll be able to see if they know the steps. It makes sense. And it works because I tried it with my oldest daughter. And I, she did get more correct when she used the calculator. And I was realizing she, she did know the steps. She was understanding the concept. It was just the basic math that was tripping her up. So um, have a little peace of mind about that. Also, if that didn't ease your mind, I did hear when I was calling several places, I was on a class to help my high schooler with math, and so many places told me that colleges often have some um, classes that kids can take who aren't very good at math to catch them up to a college level math. 
and I called our local community college to find out if that was true. It is true. There is two classes at our local community college that help STEM get to the college level classes. In one class, they do the basic math facts, like multiplication, addition, subtraction, division. They just learn that and get that down. And then in the other class, they learn decimals and fractions, and they just work on that and get it down. And then that gets them to be able to get to the more college level math, which really put this mama's mind at ease. That's what we're teaching our kids for like elementary school and part of middle school is all what's in those two classes. So if they're not getting it by the time they get older, just be at peace. <laughs> they can still get it. So don't worry and don't stress over it. Um, yeah, don't stress over it. The last thing I have to say is just pray for wisdom and ask the Lord what kind of curriculum should you use for your kids and just for him to give you wisdom and point you in the right direction if you need more help because he's faithful and, and he will send it your direction. So um, blessings to you and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that it's been helpful for you. So, all right, thank you for watching.